Hello and welcome to Telesur. I'm Carla Gonzalez and this is Interviews from Quito, the program where we explore the biggest challenges ahead in the country and in the region. On this show we will discuss the promotion of sports in Latin America and not just the popular ones that we all know. But we are interested in knowing how an educational focus to the practice of sports can transform societies through those games that develop not just your body but your mind as well. But what is needed on the part of the states to promote its practices? More budget and state support? Or do we need a complete change of mind as a society? To look at this, we have Carla Heredia, Ecuador's woman grandmaster in chess. But first, let's take a look at this video. Ecuador is very passionate about football. For some Ecuadorians, it is even an opportunity to improve their life conditions. Like the people of El Chota Valley, a very poor community located in the northern side of the country. The valley of Chota and Juncal is characterized by being an area that is immersed in poverty. It is an area where social inequality is very noticeable, and sports have been seen as mechanism to close the gaps of social inequality. Yes, it is a sport to help my family, my mother, my dad, my grandparents, and also the elderly who need one. But this football center society often forgets about other sports and activities which have even been internationally successful. This takes credit and opportunities from other people who practice different games. Just a few weeks ago, Richard Carapaz turned into the first Ecuadorian cyclist to win a stage in Il Giro d'Italia. Glenda Morejon is an Ecuadorian race walker that became the under-18 world champion in 2017 with a pair of old broken shoes and won two silver medals in the Race Walk World Championship in China in 2018. Carla Heredia just turned a national woman grandmaster in chess and apart from winning championships, helps people to improve their skills and learn about the sport. All of them agree that support for sports other than football is almost non-existent, but that doesn't stop them from improving their skills and making their country internationally proud. So thank you for being with us, Carla. Can you tell us what is the situation of the promotion of sports in Ecuador, not just soccer or basketball, the most popular ones? Uh, well, uh, our region and in particular our country uh, have many champions in different sports, including chess, of course, that's why we are here. Um, but I think that there is still much, much to do uh, from the government and also from uh, private corporations uh, to sponsor other types of sports. Uh, currently, uh, Ecuador focuses on Olympic sports, but I think that furthermore than the Olympic Games, uh, we have champions in other disciplines and at the end every champion is an ambassador of its country, in this case Ecuador, and you could invest and get a lot of return uh, in publicity, but also in prowess. You know, when someone wins a tournament from chess to basketball or any sport, we, we feel proud, we connect with that uh, player or that uh, champion. So how is the situation for a sports person, an athlete, uh, either in a physical sport or, or a mindful sport, as we call um, chess, uh, in Ecuador? How is that uh, the process that goes along? Well, in the last years I haven't had a support, but in previous years, like maybe three years ago, I, I was even part of you know, the, the plan that supports every kind of sport. Uh, we call it like for top athletes and chess was included in those. So um, I used to have a coach, tournaments and even like a basic salary. But right now I don't have uh, any sport, but I hope in the next months I will have at least a few tournaments to play before the chess Olympia. For the people who uh, check us na out now in Telesur, uh, chess Olympians are every two years and we have 180 countries playing from around the world. Uh, the last Olympiad was in Baku, Azerbaijan, and Ecuador was 27 out of 149 countries, and we were the 
second best country uh, from Latin America behind Cuba. So it's, it's interesting because we don't have a popular culture about chess, but even though uh, we have uh, many stars and many children and, and young people who train every day, like as me, with a computer or in a club, and you now we go from there. So I read that you do a lot of that work uh, promoting uh, chess to be played in schools. You also go out and speak to, to children about promotion of sports. How is that coming along? Well, a few years ago I realized that I didn't want to focus only in trophies, tournaments, and in, you know, to get a newspaper with my name. I wanted to go beyond the 64 squares and, and go to, to the schools, to the companies, to every street or work that I could and play chess with the people. So sometimes I play a lot of chess animals with 20, 30 people at the same time. And um, I, I, I like to use my voice, the little fame I have, because it's chess, it's a little voice mm -hmm. I have, uh, to go to the streets, to, to march along, uh, you know, to ask the government to have more justice in, in cases or to have more equity and so on. So have you been to like marches uh, pro-feminist or other organizations in Ecuador? Uh, yeah, um, I, I have been in, for example, <laughs> of course, 1st of May, the Day of the Workers. I have been in 8th of March, which is the a Women's Day to, to ask the government to, to have a equality in salaries and rights, uh, etc. Uh, also, we have here a situation with children who have been abused in schools. So that's also a sensitive topic that uh, a society, even though it's not our cousin or our children, we should care about. Uh, I, don't, I don't feel like to be outside the problem. I think everyone is part of the problem and we should do everything we can to raise our voice and ask institutions, etc., to, you know, to commit and work for a better country. So how can we promote, how can we um, tell the government of each of the countries that we are in, in Latin America, to promote more sports and to make them see that there's a way to actually um, get more development out of, out of the population once you promote sports, not just going to marches or, or speaking. Well, we have uh, here in Ecuador the Congress, which is the right hand of the president. And from there, of course, uh, we can make laws uh, that, that could go uh, hand to hand with sports. Uh, we have also here the institution of a sports government who has the, the power and the resources to, to do it. But as, as citizens, because either you and I don't work for, for, a, for the government, uh, I think even though we, we are not part of these um, institutions that are powerful, uh, social media nowadays is very powerful, but also um, to care about. If we care about and we ask uh, the people from the Congress and from the Sports Institute to, to take action and to, you know, to develop a plan that sports could go uh, furthermore, I always see sports not as, a, not as a medal or trophy. I always see sports to build character and promote values. So that's what I care. I don't care about the children winning a medal because not everyone can win a medal, but everyone can be a life champion. So I think as citizens, we should uh, be careful first for who we vote and then to ask them to, to promote with the laws uh, uh, these kind of initiatives. So would it be a good idea, for example, to implement maybe in school programs the need to, um, to study these uh, sports, to practice them, to learn about not just uh, uh, running behind a ball, <laughs> as we have the, the World Soccer um, uh, FIFA World Cup just around the corner? Uh, we well, um, a few years ago, I think it's 2012, the European Parliament uh, say that uh, chess should be uh, in schools. Why? Because chess promotes not only 
intelligence, but also memory. Children who play chess uh, are better in mathematics, in language, and so on. And also chess builds character. And one thing that is really important, when we play chess, we think before we move. Now we imagine if we as citizens in our everyday, in our house, in our work, in the street, we will think before we act. Wouldn't we have a better society, a more peaceful society? So the, Spain, for example, has chess in schools, Andorra, uh, Cuba, of course, Venezuela at some point, and Paraguay in, in these days will have. So why not? Why not in Ecuador? Um, I think uh, in these days chess is, is opening new spaces, uh, new promotions, and if I can help a little bit to make this happen, I, of course I will do it. So how do you see, for example, the playing of chess in the region? You've been to several uh, competitions, the uh, Olympics, uh, a couple, four times, I think. Yes. Uh, Pan uh, Boliv Bolivarian yes. um, competition, South American also. So you've been around the world. Yes, I have had an amazing opportunity to be around 35 countries representing my, 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 my Ecuador. Um, I think here in the region, uh, Chess is becoming more popular because, first of all, it's not so expensive. Then it's a super inclusive sport. Anyone can practice chess, no matter uh, your wallet, how many you have, no matter if you are tall or short. Uh, chess is for everyone. People that are blind also play chess. So it's very inclusive, and that's one of the things, one of the things I like about my sport. Um, in the region is very competitive, but the huge problem we have is that uh, once people reach the university or once people uh, see that there is not a, a support from here to one year, uh, it's disappointing because uh, imagine if you, if you will work and they pay you month by month and you don't know if next month you're going to be paid. So that's the challenge, to know if in the year you're going to play one tournament, three tournaments, or five tournaments. So I think with the right planifica planification and strategy, uh, we could uh, keep challenging uh, the world of chess. And not only uh, thinking about world champions, I always think that chess uh, can build great ambassadors for children and youth. And I think you would be a great ambassador as well. We saw recently you got an award from the National Assembly here in Ecuador. And not just because of how well you play chess, but also of your social activism. How does the two connect? Um, yes, I, uh, it's not common that a chess player will get this award from, from the Assembly or Congress that is in our country. I, I am very happy. Uh, but at the same time, I'm very humbled to know that there is still a lot of work to do in chess, but furthermore, in our society. As you see in the chess pieces, they work better when they are together and they have a plan. I also think in our society, everyone is important, from the pawn to the king, and if each one of us will do even better work every day to, you know, to to go to the same side, we could go. We, we could we, we could have a better country. And also from the uh, Congress, I think there is a lot still to do. We still have a lot of missing persons. For example, the day I was awarded was the birthday of David Romo. That is one of the uh, missing children in our country. Her mom still waits for him to have answers. And it's, it's amazing. I haven't met her mother. We know by Twitter each other. But I feel, I feel that connection, you know. It's like I have empathy for these causes. Uh, and I think that um, if I have a, a small voice, because chess has given me the opportunity that people listen, I, I want to use uh, to create awareness, uh, to motivate people to work better and that people know that there is a, a still to do things in our country uh, to get like a more peaceful society. That's true. And of course you're very active on Twitter and social <laughs> media and that affects um, our, our society in a good way. 
I've seen that there's a, a unique way to play uh, chess, that you stand around a table and you have different people around you yeah. and you play different That's games. That's chess I know. How does that work? Uh, well, um, I started doing this when I was like maybe 10 years old. First, I was one of the children who were playing against the master. So a chess simul is 20 boards like this one, or maybe 10 or 13 or 30 boards. And then one person who has expertise, normally a master, uh, plays uh, against the 20. So board one, I play board two, etc and then I go around the corner and come back. So the person of board number one has all the time I go around 19 other boards to think about his move. So it's, it's a unique feature in chess because uh, someone can, can be the master. So uh, I have lost many times, normally yeah. I win, <laughs> but it, it's amazing how the time works, you know. First I was a children excited to play against a master And then, since I have 12, 12 years old, I have been the person in the other side of the board playing against the people. And uh, normally chess is seen as uh, played only in closed spaces. So I try to put chess in public spaces so people can see it. And even though uh, not all people play chess, they think, how this works? How can she do that? And then, Why not? Why I don't play chess, you know? And start uh, creating a, a, a movement around chess. That's it. That's very interesting. I've, I've seen a couple of videos and it's interesting to see, for example, that you play against children. And I'm interested in knowing how you as a children began into chess. Uh, I was seven years old and I had like a extra, extra classes, after school classes. Uh, and my parents uh, uh, select for me chess and gymnastics. <laughs> gymnastics didn't work well. I guess not. <laughs> <laughs> But chess did, and from the beginning I, I, I was very happy because they didn't split us from boys, girls. So when I was, I all, I'm also a soccer fan, so when I was little, there was only boys, girls, soccer. So in this case, chess, we can train together, play against each other and build respect against, uh, between uh, boys and girls. And I won my first medal when I was eight years old and started training in the, in the club, in the main club of, of my city, Quito. And from now uh, on, I, I was Pan American champion, Bolivarian champion, and I have the the opportunity to be the first Ecuadorian to qualify to a Women's World Cup. And, and that, that story is amazing because that was in 2009. And in 2007, I watched the World Cup in my computer. As everybody sees the World Cup, like, wow, here is Messi, Cristiano. I was watching uh, the Chess World Cup. <laughs> and it was in Russia and the president, minister, etc. All the important people were, uh, you know, uh, in the event. It was like a, a main event, uh, really important for, for Russia. And I was like uh, speaking loud, uh, speaking uh, uh, just to my head, to me, like, I want to be there one day, you know, like, just, ima just, just let's imagine, you know, I was by myself in, in, in the living room And then two years after, um, I had the opportunity to qualify and I was not one of the favorites. I was number fifth or sixth ranked. And in the last game, in chess we played several games. In the last game, I remind, uh, it was like a flashback, like, oh, two years ago I was watching the World Cup and now I'm uh, one point away to go to the World Cup. And I, I trained a lot for that and It's amazing how powerful can be the desire combined with work. So who or which institutions were key to your development as players? Your family, maybe some ministry of the sports? What uh, uh, was involved in your, your training and your in becoming a champion? At the beginning, of course, my, my school, then all my life, my parents, uh, my dad and my mom doesn't pl don't play chess but they support me reading news. Uh, my mom and I have been, from the beginning, writing uh, 
you know, to send to the newspaper uh, about a tournament. So my mom has been a journalist, public relationist, manager, mm -hmm. and everything you can imagine as normally mothers and fathers are with their children to support. So I'm very uh, fortunate to have my parents. Uh, then uh, here we have Concentración Deportiva Pichincha, which is the one of the main uh, local institutions uh, who help uh, all kinds of sports. And, and that was key for my development because I started traveling to different uh, countries around the region and play. Then I became Women International Master, which is before Women Grand Master, and started dreaming about being Women Grand Master. In that point of time, uh, that was I think 2008 maybe, there was only one woman grandmaster in our country. Around millions of people, one woman grandmaster, and Brazil and Chile didn't have woman grandmasters. And I was already part of the Olympic team. That was one of my dreams. Uh, at 15 years old, I decided to, to quit school, to go to home school, to play chess. I qualified to the Olympic team, was one of my biggest dreams. Then became woman international master and started dreaming about being the second woman grandmaster in all the country, you know. <laughs> and um, Concentración Deportiva Pichincha, this sport institution helped me a lot. And then hand by hand, uh, the sports institution, which here is called the Minister of Sports. Uh, in, in, in that moment of time, um, there was support to many sports, not only Olympic sports. And also with budget, like did they pay for yeah, trips? Yeah, I, I was, I, I had coach, uh, uh, coach, so training, I had tournaments and a basic salary in that moment of time. So I could focus only in chess and with that, with both supports uh, and my family, of course, uh, I became a woman grandmaster in 2012. Uh, and to, the, to today, Chile and Brazil still doesn't have women grandmasters. Uh, Argentina has two, Venezuela one, um, Bolivia zero. So here in South America, there are like eight women grandmasters. So imagine Ecuador has two, and I had the, the lucky or the opportunity to, to be one. So all of these achievements, I'm sure, have um, inspired a lot of people, a lot of women, to become athletes and also start learning chess. How do you see the situation of women athletes in Ecuador? Well, I think that um, one, one thing that is very similar uh, from chess to the common citizens is that I had in my career a lot of economic barriers, uh, a lot of no's in my career, in sponsors, media, etc. And I still decide to play all my strengths for what I love, that is chess. And now we're here, no? It, it, it became well. Um, I, I feel really happy because one, one of my students, actually, uh, she's like eight years old, and they told me when they, they met me that she started playing chess because of me, because she saw me playing chess. And here becomes the part of role models that if we see more women in different areas, we say, why not? Why can't I do this? Why can't I play chess or become a president, etc.? And um, I, I feel that like a happy, but also a lot of responsibility. Um, responsibility with my actions, my words, and my commitment. So um, I, I think, uh, particularly in Ecuador, uh, women athletes have a lot of great results, and as you say, are, are like a, a, a inspiration uh, for women and also men. Because I think when you see more women um, getting awards, achievements in science, in mathematics, in, in sports, you say, why not? You challenge yourself, your beliefs, uh, the, the patriarchy that can, can be around you, and say, why not? Yeah, we can do it. So how do you see your work and um, other female athletes 
um, having changed how society sees um, chess or these types of sports that combine um, action and mind? Um, chess is a very particular sport, but it's considered a sport by the uh, International Com uh, Olympic Committee. Uh, to be a good chess player is not only about training by yourself, computer, in a club. Uh, you should go also to do some physical preparation to resist six hours of work. And we don't play like one game and then go home. We play nine games or in the Olympia, 11 games. So imagine 66 hours of playing chess plus uh, training for the games. So you end up playing more than 100 hours of chess in, in 12, 15 days is really uh, tired. So you have to have strong mind and strong <laughs> body for that. Um, I think that in particular in Ecuador, um, more people are questioning, hey, uh, this is interesting, etc. But uh, more than that, uh, I always see a sport uh, with a connection with emotion. And we cannot split the person behind the board from the from the athlete. So every time I have the opportunity to go to an interview or to a place and talk about chess, but also to talk about other stuff that can connect me with the people. Uh, when I quit school at 15 years old, uh, my parents were at work, and I was the one doing my homework for school and then I finished my school at 18 years old and then just play chess. But one day I questioned myself, I want to know more about the world and I went to the university, right now I'm doing my master's and I also have tried just to, to read because uh, the revolution starts with knowledge and if I want to talk about uh, fair causes, about feminism or, or to speak speak my bo voice louder for someone else, I need arguments, not only good inten intentions. So um, for me, books are also one of my other passions, and I think uh, one of the best gifts one can give to someone is knowledge, and that can come with books. So you've talked a lot about um, your achievements and you're doing a master's on uh, sports management. What do you see as your future now that you're a grandmaster? <laughs> well, I study sports management because first of all I, I dream about coming back here to Ecuador. I study abroad um, and with knowledge and, and the capital to have my own company to help um, many athletes that right now doesn't have support or have limited support. I would like to try to connect uh, private companies or sponsors with the athlete and um, to help them to, first of all, become better uh, persons, then better uh, athletes. And also I see myself in working for some uh, non-profit organization or even having my, my own profit organization and using sports as a tool or as a catalyst to improve our society. Everyone likes sports, different kinds of sports. Everyone hears when we talk about sports. Why not to talk about peace? Why not to talk about refugees? Why not to talk about respect through sports? I think that is a great way of empowerment for women, for communities, for social awareness. So sports are for everyone, and I see sports uh, as, as a tool that can be used not only for trophies, but also for doing changes in society. I'm sure we'll be following all your achievements. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much for your time, Carla. Thanks. So we've been talking to Carla Heredia, woman grandmaster in chess, on the close relationship between sports and empowerment, and how to promote those sports that develop body and mind as well. This is Interviews from Quito. I'm Carla Gonzalez. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time. Muchas gracias.